Welcome to the Brad and Taylor Show. Today we have Aaron Klinger. You're listening to the Brad and Taylor Show, a podcast that inspires entrepreneurs to pursue their passions. We're sitting down with some of the best to learn how they got started and some lessons they learned along the way. Hey, Aaron. Hi, how are you? We're good. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me on today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's get the show started. So um, tell us a little bit about you. Kind of like, what do you do? Yeah. So um, I'm one of the realtor partners with the Lafayette team at Coldwell Banker Hubble Briarwood. So I work with buyers and sellers every day. I've been doing this for about 11 years and just uh, helping uh, them make the American dream. I like it. I like it. So when you were younger, is this what you had planned for your future? No, not at all. Not even a little bit. What did you have planned? I, uh, well, my mom started in real estate in the 70s, and so I grew up with my mom as a realtor, and she always wanted it to be a family business, and you know, you're a kid, you're a teenager, you're like, no, I'm not going to do this, so I uh, I went off to Grand Valley after high school and lasted about three semesters and then became a bartender, hmm. and actually, I was in 2007, 2008, I was all set. I've always been a scuba diver. I've been diving since I was 13. It's been a while now because real estate really took over, but I was all scheduled to go down to Florida to become um, a dive master. And I moved home to Lansing from Grand Rapids, um, you know, a few months before I was supposed to leave. And by the time I got here, got around my family again, I was like, I can't go. Yeah. And uh, so I ended up getting into real estate and so thankful I did because think of how many different ways your life could go with like one decision and wouldn't it be where I'm at today with my awesome family and right. husband and how excited was your mom when you were like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go into real estate. Oh, she was so excited. <laughs> so we are like the most different, but most same person. And so being in business with your mom has its own challenges <laughs> challenges and you know it's really rewarding at the same time but I remember going to her and saying hey mom do you think I'd be good in real estate and she was like hmm, I, I don't know Erin probably <laughs> because she had just been trying to get me in into the b- business forever so right but yeah she's very excited and that was almost just over 11 years ago so awesome yeah. was there any advice that she gave you maybe when you first started out that it just kind of stuck with you throughout these last 11 years Yeah. So she did not let anything come easy. If you want, you know, you think of going into business with your family and you think of, oh, okay, this will be easy for me to get my feet on the ground and things like that. But so when I got into the business, it was 2009, which was at like the depths of like despair Mm -hmm. (laughs) for people. So She just told me, if you're going to get into the real estate business, you're going to get in now because I don't want you to be an order taker. And what she meant by that was not take orders from clients or people, but really learn how to guide them and navigate through all of these special struggles and circumstances that people have when buying and selling and not just taking their order. So yeah, yeah, that was probably the best piece of advice she gave me. I bet starting then in that kind of situation where the market was in 2009, to now has kind of prepared you a little bit just because, I mean, they're completely different situations, but you have that stress of the 2009 market and now this one. So, yeah, Yeah, it's so crazy how just polar opposite they are. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, obviously you had struggles with sellers and even buyers because we would look at so many houses, so many that it was hard for them to make a decision because there was always another one for cheaper yeah. or whatever. And I mean, it was just yeah. an endless inventory and now it's, you know, completely different. So people think, oh, anyone selling their house right now is so lucky. But when you've got people buying and selling, I mean, the beauty of our business is, you know, no matter what market you're in, it's always busy because there's always people that, I mean, people need housing. That's one of the main things in life. So um, it's always busy. It's just a different kind of busy. Yeah. Take us to your first transaction when you switched over into real estate. How was that for you? Did it go smooth? I know you you had your mom there to kind of help you walk through, I'm sure. But how did that go for you? So I remember it. I remember the lady's name was Sherry. She was buying it for her son who was attending MSU. And (laughs) She was a type A personality and I'm very like in the disc. I don't know if you guys do the disc profile, but I'm a high yeah. eye. So I'm yeah. like, how does everybody feel like let's <laughs> hang out and talk about everything. 
And she was like, go, go, go. And so I remember we had like seven or eight houses to tour all like in Lansing, like downtown-ish. And I had my whole route planned out. I had driven it like a few days before. And (laughs) the day I went, she's like following me. She's like in one house. And before I like could even open the front door, she was like in and out. And I was like, (laughs) I was so perplexed. I'm like, oh my God. (laughs) Okay. And so we go to the second house, there's construction. And so I have to like find a new route. And this is before like my, I had GPS on my phone or anything. So I'm like, oh my God. (laughs) Anyways, we look at a house and she's like, all right, yeah, let's write an offer. And in my mind, we're going to Big B. We're going to get an iced tea. We're going to write this offer. No, it's like on the hood of my car. And I'm like, what the heck is a permanent <laughs> parcel number? Like you learn nothing and you're not a lot in your 40 hour real estate class. So, yeah. 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 So I, it was on the hood of my car. I was wearing a blazer and now I don't ever wear blazers, especially in July. <laughs> <laughs> Sun's beating down on you. So no, but I remember and they still own the house and I, I talked to her still and um, yeah, now they've got it rented out, but yeah, I mean, I'll never forget that. <laughs> That's crazy. It seems like yeah. a fast first transaction. Like, okay, let's get oh my this God. done. It was let's so <laughs> fast, but I remember sitting at the closing and it was a girl like in her mid twenties and she was being relocated for her job. And I remember she had to bring 40 some thousand dollars to closing. And this is back when everyone was doing like a short sale or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I remember feeling so guilty that I was so excited because it was like she was bringing her life savings to closing. And this house was only $70,000. So you can imagine how much she like had bought it for and had to sell it for. But it was really sad, but like also exciting for me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's crazy. That is crazy. Now I've yeah. been waiting to ask you this question since we first got on the call before we hit record. Okay. What is the worst property you have been to? Oh my gosh. <laughs> or showing. There are or showing. so many. Yeah, or showing. Okay. Yep. Or showing. Yeah. So there have been quite a few, like where you can't even like walk in the door. Like the smell is so bad. But um I was showing houses to first time buyers. It was the sister and brother in law to one of my past clients. We went in the house, we went in the back door, it was the old turn of the century house, and we went to walk up the stairs, and there was like a little um, landing where the stairs kind of curved, and as soon as I went up there, I turned around to my clients, and they had this wide-eyed look, and we all felt super uncomfortable, like nobody really said anything, but we were like, man, something's going on, so we basically left and went out the back door. And like an hour later, I get a call from the agent and they're like, Hey, did you show so-and-so? And I was like, yeah, I don't think we're moving forward on it. Um, she said, well, the seller said you left the front door open and the key box was on the back door. And I know we didn't go anywhere near the front door. And I was like, oh. I promise you I didn't. And she was, <laughs> I remember, I'll never forget it. She goes, dang it. This is not the first time this has happened. Uh Oh, <laughs> And so a couple days later, I'm in my office at Coldwell Banker up on the third floor. And there's a few people talking in the copy room. And I went in to make some copies. And there were a few agents, they were in a circle. And one agent, she was talking about this house and how she showed it the day before. And she had a super uncomfortable feeling. And she's had like a massive headache ever since. Hmm. And she was saying where it was and I was like, stop it, stop it, stop it. It was the same house. But I remember I just got like full body chills. Cause you know, it's one thing for you to feel like uncomfortable in a house, Mm -hmm. but like another to like the same scenario, unbiased person talk about it. So every time I pass that house, I'm like, and it sold (laughs) last year, I think. And I was like, please don't let any of my clients want to see it. (laughs) So, but yeah, that was, I couldn't stop the other. It was something. It was a bad feeling. Something. Some. I don't know what happened, but lots you of only showing. have to go once to that house. Yes. Okay. Yes. And you learn. And I was like, nope. I'm all set. I'm all set. But. Like someone else is going if someone else wants to go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get another nope, client. That's fine. Go ahead. I will open the door for you, but I will be out on the front porch. Yeah. <laughs> Man, oh. creepy. It was crazy. Tell us a little bit about your team. Yeah. So my mom, Kim Lafarette, she started in real estate in the seventies and 
in the nineties, she was, you know, real estate, such a busy business. We've got paperwork, we've got appointments, everything. And so she decided in the nineties that she needed help. And so she hired her first buyer's agent. Um, and at this time, my sister, Kelly LaBelle, who's still on our team, um, had graduated high school. This was, uh, so she joined the team and got licensed in 96. And so she was, and still is, uh, like the office manager, administrative assistant, boss, keeps us all organized. And so my mom hired her first buyer, buyer's agent, and then it just, um, expanded from there. So now we've got, it's me, um, Lee Henry's who's been with us for eight years. And then Kelly LaBelle, who's been on the team forever. And then, um, Kim. So Kim doesn't do a lot of sales anymore, as you imagine, retiring in real estate isn't something that a lot of people are able to do. And so you never really retire from real estate, but she's pulled back and not doing sales. And she's got some other roles within the team now, but she's able just to really enjoy the team that she's put together um, and do a lot of kind of behind the scenes things. So and vacation and go out on the boat and, you know, do things that she deserves to be able to do now. (laughs) Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Do you have any goals that you want to accomplish for the rest of this year? Yes. So this has been on my like goal every year we make goals and this has been on it. And finally this year, I, um, I've got one more class to take to get my broker's license. Um, so I'm working on that. And then, um, I've been, I love keeping in touch with people and especially past clients. I mean, through Facebook and social media, it makes it really easy. But um, my goal is to get everything organized and we've got our, um, you know, we use top producer, which allows us to keep in contact and have everybody in one database. But I really want to organize that and create more of like a way for me to keep in constant contact with, with a lot of those past clients. So. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, that, those yeah. those things work out good. Um, yeah, they do. That's awesome. So let's say you had to start all over today. You only had $1,000. How would you spend your first $1,000? Oh, my gosh. So <laughs> I know I wouldn't spend it on buying leads. That's what I have <laughs> learned from this because you're paying people for your own leads already, especially if you have listings. So I would work my sphere. So my SOI, my sphere of influence, the people that I already have rapport with that know me that already love me that, um, you know, just work on really making sure they know that I am in the real estate business. And so I remember when I first started, I sent out like letters to everybody like, Hey, I'm in real estate and stuff, but really working those people that I knew and the relationships that I already had and, you know, not trying to start over with people that I was, you know, just picking up out of the sky or anything. So, um, I would spend my money really making sure that it was completely implanted into them that I was in the business. Yeah. That's awesome. I like it. I like it. Is there any uh, books that you've read that are your favorite books that you could recommend? Uh, yeah. Um, raving fans. I don't know if you've ever read that. It's basically like a parable. It's about, you know, I, so I don't consider myself, I know I'm a salesperson, but I don't consider myself a salesperson. That's very important for me to create that difference with my clients. So um, I want to create raving fans. So I want to go above and beyond. I mean, there's so many people that are like, oh my gosh, my last real estate transaction, I couldn't believe they were like pushing me into a corner and doing this. And, you know, I never want to be that person. I want to be an advisor. And that's what I consider myself, um, really helping my clients make their own decision, keeping them not only on track and voicing my opinion, if I think they're making a unwise or, you know, kind of rash decision, Mm -hmm. but just guiding them to understand that for themselves. So they don't feel pushed into anything. So raving fans is really good because 72% of my business this past year was repeat and referral. And that's important to me because, um, again, you already have rapport. Um, if you can, service somebody and go above and beyond and just do like the absolute best. I mean, that's going to be your best source of referrals instead of spending a thousand dollars a month on lead sources or anything like that. So it's that. And then the Dale Carnegie golden book. I don't know if you've ever seen that, the little golden book, but I haven't seen that one. So anxious. Oh, okay. Well, Google um, Dale Carnegie's little golden book. And it's like basically the seven ways to like succeed in life. And the one that I always get the most out of, cause I used to be so anxious. Like if 
like I said, on the disc profile, I'm a high I. Yeah. And so if like everybody didn't love me and like I couldn't make everything perfect, I was like in extreme panic mode. <laughs> and so <laughs> I, um, uh, one of his things is what's the worst that can happen. And so I use that a lot with myself and with my clients now. And that kind of helps me step back and look at things like, okay, with a clear mind, clearer picture. But I took the Dale Carnegie course, gosh, a long time ago, like maybe eight or nine years ago. And that was fantastic. Huh. So, That's awesome. Yep. I like it, I like it. <laughs> That's perfect. How can people get a hold of you? Uh, so I can be reached on my cell phone. That's 616-389-7918. You can email me at Aaron, E-R-I-N, at L-A-F-O-R-E-T team.com or our website, Lafayette team.com. That's awesome. Hey, is there anything else we want to share with everyone before we go? I don't think so. Sweet. I'm just so proud of you. I remember working with you the first, when you first started this business and to see <laughs> what you've brought it to is, is really remarkable. And we, we love all of your photographers and you guys do such a great job. So thank, thank you, you for that. I know we've known you for a long time now. So I know, I know. Been a yeah. long way. So both <laughs> yeah. ways, both ways. Yeah. So awesome. Um, well, um, thanks for coming on and sharing your story with us today. Yeah, My pleasure. All right. You guys have a good one. <laughs> Are these working? All right. Right. Okay. There we go. Oh, there we go. I think they're working. Should we tell them? Uh, Mine keeps falling. It doesn't like my voice. What do we got to tell them? Subscribe. Subscribe? What do we, do we got to point at it? Hey, I think there's a subscription button like. It might be, it might be there. It might be right there too. Somewhere. Somewhere. Find it. It's red. Yeah. And red. it's blue. It's green. I don't really know. It's, it's a color. This mic isn't even attached. Did you plug these in? Well, I guess, uh, I wonder if they can hear us. Yeah. I wonder if they hear us. Well, we should probably tell them if, if they can hear us, uh, we should probably tell them also give us a five star review for listening to on Apple. That'd be cool. Five, five star stars, review. guys. Share it with everybody they can think of. We won't take but, four stars. I mean, I don't even think these are on. I mean, this no, is, I don't think this is working. This is not working. Yeah.